Hey guys, Les from Future FX here. Just wanted to take you through some settings and some back testing um, in order to show a few different things, but to show why, or not not necessarily why, but to show why and you know how certain changes to settings make a difference. That didn't make sense, but I will want to show you. Let me share my screen. Okay. Here we are on the back tester. From um, I've been doing all my back testing recently from the 9th of January to the 9th of July. It's just an exact six months period. Um, we're looking at Euro USD, which really um, isn't probably my favorite pair, but well, let's get into this anyway. But so these are the settings that I've mostly been using on this pair. Um, I don't change too much between pairs, but I have, have been doing a lot of back testing to optimize as well. So I'll be doing some more and sharing. It's, it's starting to greatly improve results. Um, max trades I've got at six. Auto trade gap is 1.4 with a 1.1 multiplier. Um, Aiming for a minimum profit of $8, but with the profit multiplier of 1.5. Uh, I've got, this is on a 10K account, so we're looking at a 5% equity protection there. Starting lot size is 0.08 with a 1.1 multiplier. Okay, so that's the, ba that's the basic settings that I've been using for most pairs. And I'm trading between one and eight hours after market opens. So one hour after market opens, it can start trading up until eight hours, which is um, eight hours is one hour before the London session opens. So essentially, we're just looking at trading the Asian session. And as I said, the lot size 0.08. And the recommended lot size for all the software on those settings is 0.07. Okay, it works out the recommended lot size just based off your account balance um, and, you know, other settings like your trade gap factor and your multipliers. And it comes up with a, a recommended lot size. And so I'm using just... I've just rounded up to 0 0.08. So that's what I'm using on this back testing. And I'll whiz through that, this back testing for you. Um, I will pause it while it does the back testing a little bit just to time lapse it for you. So this video is not too long because I'm going to be doing quite a few of these little back tests just to show you a few changes. So uh, we what are we up to date wise? So we've nearly done two months of back testing, and you know we're, we're two and a half percent down at the moment. So so far not so good at all. Okay, so that's that six months of back testing. And like I said before, at the two and a half month mark, or the three month mark, sorry, so halfway through, we we're still two and a half percent down. So it was looking terrible. But in the end, you know, we're, we're five percent up. But um, there's a couple of things I want to sort of show and share with back testing as well. So each one of these is a 500 or a 5% loss. Every time it takes a loss, that's a 5% loss. So on that sort of note, drawdown can't really exceed 5% because then it gets closed out. But how the back testing displays the maximum drawdown in the report is that from this highest point to the next lowest point, that is what it will call its maximum drawdown. 
So we, we've lost 5%. You know, we've maybe made another 1% and then we've lost 5% again. So I'm going to assume when I click on report, it's going to show the drawdown as being probably around about 9%. And I haven't checked. I don't know. But that's roughly what how it would show it, even though at no one particular time we're ever in more than 5% of actual drawdown. So the report, um, well, it's actually 11 and a half. So the reason that would be is that after that, it probably went into a little bit more drawdown before it started coming good. But that's, that's just what I wanted to explain. You, like With these settings, you can't get into more than that 5% drawdown, but you can have several of those in a row, which will have the report showing more than 5%. Not that that's here, neither here nor there. That is still correct. I just wanted to explain how that worked. And we've made 4.8%. The other thing I wanted to share is that if we have a look at when this loss actually occurred, it's on the, the 2nd of – what have we got there? We've got the 2nd. Uh, it either – it's hard to tell just from here, but it either occurred on the 2nd or the 3rd of February. And I know from checking that it was actually the 3rd that that loss occurred. If we um, go to the Forex calendar and have a look at the 3rd, that was actually NFP, so the most volatile news event of, um, <clears throat> of the month. And, you know, we either wouldn't have traded this pair this day or we would have definitely closed out earlier, which would have minimised that loss. And it's probably best to, to not trade NFP simply because if you do get into a bit of drawdown, you can't afford to let it keep running past this time. Because of NFP, you would have to close those trades and take a loss. Um, yeah, so essentially what I'm saying is we wouldn't have taken that loss because we wouldn't have traded. This other one here, um, I haven't investigated exactly why that one occurred, but it could have just been one of those things where the market went against us and we took that loss. Now, what I wanted to share was that the input minimum profit we used was $8. Okay. Um, and we actually made $482 all up. What I want to share is because this has confused some people, if we make the minimum profit four dollars, so now we're only going to make four dollars every trade or trade set, or four dollars every trade, but with the multiplier it could be more per trade set. Um, if anything I'm saying about these settings doesn't make sense, watch the setting video. I'm not going through them all on this um, video. Um, so this software actually works better by keeping the input minimum profit smaller. Okay, so I'm going to run the same test, but instead of $8, I'm only aiming for $4 per trade. Okay, I'm not going to change anything else, and we're going to run this exact same back test again just to show you the difference that it does make. So we're still going on the back testing here. This is the so that, that that is that NFP loss we took before. One one of the I'm gonna talk just have it while it's doing its back testing. I just wanted to have a chat about two things to do with red folder news events, particularly in relation to cost averager. Okay, the, the more volatile news events like NFP and CPI and a couple of others, they, they can obviously, you know, depending on what trade you have on, if you were going to trade through them, they could, you know, depending on what 
direction it causes the market to move. They could either work for you or against you, obviously, um, which is fine. But the more volatile events, you can actually get gappage sometimes. But you, you can definitely always incur a high risk of slippage. Now, slippage is simply, let's say, for example, you had a stop loss set and the news event went against you and it hit your stop loss. Let's say that stop loss was meant to incur you a 1% loss. But because the market moves past your stop loss so fast, the broker isn't able to liquidate your order quick enough at that value. So at least some of that order can get closed at a much lower value. And that, that's simply because if you're trying to sell an order, somebody needs to be buying it. Um, and depending on your broker, that slippage issue can be more pronounced. Um, brokers that don't have as much liquidity, you will see a, a much um, larger and more regular um, issue with slippage. Now, slippage only ever works against you because if the market goes um, the other way, then it, it's not... Um, you can always close out a trade at a lower value than the market currently is at because somebody's always willing to purchase cheaper than the market value. But when the, the market goes against you and slippage goes the other way, um, nobody's willing to pay a higher price than the current market value. So for that reason, slippage only ever works against you. So for that reason, those more volatile news events, you should never, ever have a trade open prior to it. There are strategies that are after the market opens, um, after that news event starts, then place trades. I'm not saying you can't do that, but the risk of having a trade well, depending, if you're doing real swing trading and there's great big distances between stop losses and take profits, and that's fine, but talking more cost averager and, and, and you know more intraday stuff, if you have a trade open prior to one of those real volatile news events, then, then that slippage is a real big issue. And, and it's just too big of a risk to, to warrant doing as far as I'm concerned. Um, the other thing, and this is more particularly to do with cost average up, is that the settings I'm just using right now, I have my um, maximum loss set at 5%. So if that news event, and this isn't talking about slippage, but if that news event, any news event goes against you, you can take up to a 5% loss. Yeah, you know, not, not, Slippage could possibly make that a little more, but um, even if it didn't, I could take a 5% loss. Whereas if, the, if that news event goes in our favour, it's only going to, you know, close out, um, you know, it'll try, close out that, that particular trade group for 4 or $8. And then depending if it's still the right time to trade, it may open up a, a you know a few more trades and you might make another, you know, two or three, four or eight dollar profits. But my point is you, you maybe you make one, maybe two percent profit if it's a big movement in your favor. But if it goes against you, you can you'd take a five percent loss. So the, the risk reward there just doesn't make sense either. All right, so this six months is finished. And the difference is we're just aiming for $4 instead of $8. Um, we've only incurred that one loss, which was the NFP loss, which in actual practice we wouldn't have taken because we wouldn't have traded. Um, but we didn't take that second loss. Okay, so that, that's the difference aiming for that smaller profit makes is that, um, you know, we, we've taken one less loss. But because we're aiming for that smaller profit, we, we did make 1.3% less all up. Although, you know, as we said, we wouldn't have taken that 5% that loss. Okay, so that's that 
was just demonstrating why we aim for that smaller profit. Now, if I if I change that and aim for like a twenty dollar profit instead of four or eight, we would find we would hit um, that maximum loss, you know, more than two times. I'm not sure how many, but um, you would hit it more simply simply because if we opened up trades, the market would retrace, but not quite enough to make twenty dollars and then go the wrong way again and hit your equity protection. That's more likely to occur. The smaller the profit you're aiming for the less retracement you need to close out that whole trade group. Um, so that's why we need to keep that um, minimum profit uh, small. And generally, as a rough guide, if I'm using a 0.01 lot size, so in the settings, if I'm using um, 0.01, I would use a yeah, no more than a one dollar. Aiming for one dollar. Um, zero point zero eight. I've been using an eight dollar. You know, but what we've just proved there was four dollars is is possibly better. But I wouldn't use any more than eight dollars if I'm using a zero point zero eight lot size. Now that will vary slightly depending on the pairs. If it's a a pair that's not very volatile, then I may have a a larger lot size then the minimum profit I'm using, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so that was two back tests on Euro USD trading during the Asian session only. Now, I have predominantly, almost exclusively been trading the Asian session <clears throat> just because that suits me personally. Um, I know some people, or a lot of people have been asking about trading London and New York sessions. And, and so this next bit of backtesting is going to be dealing with that. I'll just put those settings back to how we did on that last backtest. Either four or eight dollars. We actually made more money on eight dollars, but we um, had, say, so yes, we made more money with the eight dollars. I averaged out over um, six months, but uh, well, the big difference really is, you know, we had 4% or more than 4% less drawdown due to running with four. And that was because we took one less uh, maximum loss hit. Um, and, you know, like before, after, after um, halfway through the back testing, when we had an $8 minimum target, we were actually 2.5% um, down. And, you know, at the moment, the same, roughly, we're only half a percent down. So, you know, we, we were never in as big a loss. It, it did come good and make a little bit more money. But anyway, that's that's enough of that. I'm going to go through some settings <coughs> that I would use if I decided I wanted to trade the London-New York session. So start hour, I'm going to put that in as nine. That is that is when London starts at the moment. And the end hours, I'll, I'll just go with 20, possibly 18. Um, that's just, just up to you, basically. And now the differences in settings that I'm going to use, instead of 0 0.08, I'm going to use 0 0.05. Now, I haven't, I haven't done extensive back testing on this yet, so... Um, you know, hopefully these back testing results turn out all right, but they could still use some more optimization for the London New York session. But for the moment, this is just what I'm looking at. Um, so I'm going to use a smaller lot size, or, or almost half the size, not quite, but instead of 0 0.08, I'm going to use 0 0.05. All right. And this is just simply because London and New York, there is a lot more movement. It's as simple as that which does give the potential for more profit. So definitely worth looking into settings to use during that time, if you wish to. The other thing I'm going to change is the auto trade gap factor. Instead of 1.4, I'm going to go with two. That's, you know, so it's going to make the trade further, like the initial two trades are going to be further apart, straight up, simply because there is more movement. And I'm going to make the, 
the trade gap multiplier larger as well, which will mean each trade is going to get further and further and further apart. I'm going to stick with um, stick with the four dollar profit target, even though I'm using that smaller lot size and the minimum profit multiplier one point one still. So that's the difference. So all I've really done is made the, the lot size smaller and spaced the trades out further. Now, when we used the minimum target of $4 during the Asian session, we only made $380, I believe, for six months, 3.8%. So let's see how this one turns out. It should turn out better because there is a lot more movement during the London, New York sessions. But the risk is that we may take more maximum loss hits. So let's kick it off, see how we go. It'll be interesting. I, I'm going to assume we will still take that loss on that NFP on the 3rd of February. We can keep track of the profit here. So every hundred dollars is one percent. So you know we're up to two, two and a half percent. Three percent. Okay, so NFPs are tearing right about now. Yeah, so we still took that loss, but in actual practice, we wouldn't have taken that loss because we wouldn't have traded. Like, especially now we're trading the London New York session, we definitely wouldn't have traded. Um, I wouldn't have traded any pairs for NFP. So that, that loss would not have occurred. All right, well, I'll just pause it a bit to time lapse it for you. So we're up to um, 26th of April. So we're a bit more than halfway through. But look, we're almost, we're up to about, um, we're up to four and a half percent profit. 5% profit, so we are doing better than our back testing during the Asian session. Okay, so definitely looking good. We're up over 11% profit. We only took that one max loss equity protection hit, and that was because of NFP. So in practice, we wouldn't have taken it. And if we hadn't have taken that 5% loss there, then our actual um, profit would have been 5% higher. So instead of 12%, we would have been up to 17% profit now. So that's that's getting pretty huge. All right, cool. This is something I wanted to show you about back testing as well. This little loss at the end here is obviously not that big. So it's not a 5% loss. That simply means that we had a few trades open in drawdown when the, um, the, the back testing time stopped. So that, that shows up as a loss, um, but that may or may not have become a 5% drawdown and become a loss. You know, most likely it wouldn't have hit 5% and it would have just turned into profit. We, we don't know. All right, so obviously results much better. The report, 10.5% profit. Um, 
maximum drawdown was 5.6, so the drawdown was much less again as well. So it, it's quite obvious that trading this particular pair during the London and New York session is giving better results, more profit, less drawdown. It's hard to say exactly how much drawdown we would have incurred because this, this drawdown here, 5.6%, was just because we hit our max loss here and then a little 0.6% more drawdown after that. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to do back testing again, but starting from the 6th of February so that we avoid that loss, which we in practice, as I said, in actual use, we would not have incurred that loss because we wouldn't have traded for NFP. So, all right, I'll just start from here and we'll back test this and see. Um, so from here, and, and I'll probably stop the back testing before we go off because I don't want that interfering with the results either. Oh, that shouldn't matter. Um, just, just quickly, these little little lumps here, they aren't fishing spots. It looks a bit like a sounder. <laughs> the bigger this, these little lumps, that simply means more trades have been opened and you've incurred some drawdown. Okay, so the bigger the lump, the bigger the drawdown simply. All right, so, you know, you can see we've incurred one, two, three, four, five, five of those, which are, are roughly the same sort of size. But anyway, so let's let's do this back testing without that NFP loss involved and we'll just see exactly what sort of drawdown we actually would have incurred in real real world usage. Okay, this is looking better without that big loss involved. What day are we up to? All right, so I'm just going to stop that there because we're almost at the end of the time. And and let's see what our biggest drawdown was. There you go, 3.91%. So I would say in actual usage, if, you know, if we didn't trade NFP, then that would have been the biggest drawdown we would have incurred. And we would have made, um, you know, 16 or 17% profit during that time avoiding the NFP one. All right. So I, up until now, I've been spending the majority of my time um, on the coding side of this software, just trying to, you know, put a lot of different things into place and learning to code and working out what works and what doesn't, and coming up with as many improvements to the software code as I could. Um, and that will continue to happen. But at the moment, I'm, I'm putting a lot more of my time and effort into, into back testing and working out um, a couple of things, like working out the, the best way to use the software at, in its current form. Instead of just trying to improve it, I'm just going to, you know, through usage and back testing, um, work out sort of like optimize settings for various pairs and, and work out, you know, some pairs are obviously going to work better during the London, New York session. Some are going to be better during the Asian session. So there's going to be a lot more information on that and optimize settings for those different times. Uh, some pairs I'll be sharing sort of optimized settings for the Asian session and same pair, but optimized settings for the, London, New York session, as, as I've just done now with EURUSD. Um, now, they won't all have such a marked difference between um, one session and the other. This is obviously EURUSD, obviously, and not surprisingly, um, trades better during the London, New York session. And, and so you've seen two lots of settings now. So 
I think that'll probably be the best way for me to share any optimized settings I come up with will be via a video like this um, showing the back testing. Um, I might, while I'm going, even though this will make the video a little bit longer, I think I will go through a couple of other pairs as well. Um, so let's let's just have a look at something totally different, AUDCHF. And my, my basic settings that I did start using for pretty much all pairs was 1.4, 1.1, profit. Um, I'll use I'll use whatever recommended lot size it tells me to, and volume of 1.1, and the just trading the Asian session. Okay, so I'll just check. I'll just check what it's recommending me to use. So this is just showing the trading in a visual mode. <clears throat> Once it gets around to starting. There we go. So it's just back testing, but it's showing it visually working, which is handy for working things out, but it does take a lot longer to back test that way. Anyway, so it's recommending 0 0.08. So I'll, I'll jump in and I'll use exactly that. And we'll see what sort of results we get using those settings. I have, I have, I um, mean, you would have seen in my last video, I, that's not the settings I'm actually using now. I have optimized settings for AUDCHF the Asian session that worked much better than this but I just want to show you my my default settings um, that I, I was originally using and, and then show the difference that optimized settings are making but one of the reasons that um, Euro US works better during the London New York session. Well, probably the reason is that you know US is New York. Um, yeah, so that's when that particular currency is getting traded the most. Um, so it stands to reason that it works better during that session. AUD and AUD pair, obviously, um, there's a much better chance that it's going to do well during the. The Asian session, it will still do well during the London, New York session as well, but um, it, it's because it's an Asian-ish pair, it's going to have the potential to be okay during the Asian session. Pound yen is also quite good during the Asian session. Yen being Asian, pretty simple. Anyway, I'll let this play out and get back to you. Okay, that's our six months of back testing. As you can see, we've hit our maximum allowable loss three times during that time, but still managed to make six point seven percent profit, uh, which which is fine. I'm, I'm, I wouldn't be unhappy with that result. Um, drawdown is obviously more than I would prefer. Um, one thing like we did before, you would want to check exactly when this loss occurred and, and then compare that with the um, economic calendar for X Factory um, to see if that was a red folder event. Um, you know, most, not most of them, but some of these will only have occurred because there was a red folder event. Uh, and then in actual practice, we wouldn't have traded this pair if there was an AUD event during this time. So some of these losses may not have occurred. I'm not going to go through that just right now. 
but you just want to do exactly the same thing, find out exactly when that loss occurred, and you can do that by trading that that week on the visual mode and seeing exactly when that loss occurred and then cross-referencing with the, the economic calendar and see if that was, did, did line up with the red folder event. So one or more of those may not have occurred in actual use, but I won't bother with that right now. What I'm going to do is, so we'll have a look. You know, we've hit our equity protection three times, um, still ended up with decent profit. But the problem is if you had started trading here, and taking two losses in a row, you wouldn't be feeling very good about those results at all. So let's jump back into, um, hang on just quickly. So I'm going to put in my optimized settings and hopefully we'll make more profit with less drawdown. So 671. And 9.15 is what we've got to beat. And what I'm changing here is I'm going to reduce the maximum number of trades just to five. Um, the I'm going to space the trades out just a little bit more initially and I'm going to have a 1.3 multiplier in there so they are going to get further and further apart um, I'm going to reduce it to a $4 profit target I'm only going to use a smaller lot size but the big difference is I'm going to use a much larger lot size multiplier. Okay, so I've halved the initial lot size, but, and the second one, because of this setting, the second trade will also be just 0 0.04, but after that, it's going to jump up to about 0 0.07 or 8, and then from there, it's going to jump up to about 0 0.12, so they're going to get much, much larger. Well, there'll only be five of them, though. So three of them will be getting much, much larger. Um, so that's the biggest difference. That's comes at the risk of more drawdown if the market continues to go against you, which is one reason I've reduced the number of trades. Um, but And this won't work on all pairs. I, I know it doesn't really work on EURUSD, but it requires a much smaller so like in this chart here for example if we were in a fair bit of drawdown here the larger that multiplier the less retracement you need to hit your minimum profit target so with a small multiplier you may not hit it and then you might take a loss whereas with the big multiplier you would hit the profit target and then, you know, you wouldn't be in drawdown anymore. You would have taken profit. So we'll let this um, these settings play out on that same back testing and see what difference it makes. And so we're only aiming for $4 every trade instead of 8 as well. But despite that, the results should be better. Okay, so we just finished that back testing on those optimized settings. And big difference, hey. So instead of hitting that maximum loss three times, we didn't hit it any times. Let's just check out the report. So we made nine and a half percent profit. Um, that's a hundred bucks less than when I back tested earlier. Oh, I know what happened. I no, I don't know what happened, but anyway, it doesn't matter. That's um, a much you know, 50% more profit, and the, the drawdowns only very small, so that was a big difference as well.
and, and just to refresh your memory, that was the optimized settings that we were using. Uh, keep going here for a little bit. Pound US, I want to use as soon as I find where it is. Um, I've gone blind. There it is. So pound US. I'll just go through my optimized settings that I've been using for it. Um, dropping the maximum trades down to only four. So I don't like to, to have too many trades. Uh, the idea of the software is just to cost average into position, not to not to full-on Martingale strategy it and open up more and more and more trades. The idea is to trade with the trend. Um, the, the software is calculating the, the current trend on three different time frames and all of that. So the idea is to trade with the trend and you know, preferably the market goes straight into profit every time it opens up a trade. We know that's not going to happen all the time. And the idea is to just cost average into position, hence the name of the software. Um, so the idea isn't to need to open up more and more trades. So four to six is all I ever use. Um, okay, the optimized settings. Um, I'm using the same distance between trades. I am aiming for four dollars profit still. And all right, so I think I'm using almost exactly the same settings. I'm just reading off my notes here. Um yeah, so the only difference to what I was using on AUDCHF was I just reduced the trades, number of trades by one. And I just quickly move through those results for you. So this pair, which is pound US, it hasn't been making huge profit or anything. It's just been gradual and steady. But for me, gradual and steady is what trading is all about. If you can find a way to make regular steady profit, then, you know, as they say, you never go broke taking profit. And admitted like we nearly finished the six months and we've made six percent profit so that's only one percent per month but we don't we don't only trade one pair um there's there's during this six months there's a lot of days where this particular pair didn't take out any trades and while it wasn't taking out trades in this pair it was trading another pair making profit on it um yeah, so generally, generally I have two to three pairs trading every day. That's just something the software decides for itself. I think I really have the, I have the software on and running on about um, you know twelve to sixteen different pairs, but set to only trade two to three pairs every day. And we must be nearly finished here. But, you know, we haven't hit our maximum loss at all. And we've made, you know, worthwhile profit. And as soon as it finishes these last few trades, we'll check out the report. There we go. And 
you know, six percent profit, three and a half percent drawdown. So the results aren't as good as it was on AUDCHF, but still, as I said, good, steady, regular profit, worthwhile. So I'm going to go through one more pair because it is quite simply my favourite pair. Um, and I'm using the same settings again. I'm just going back up to five trades per pair, but using that, everything else the same. And it'll be obvious why this is my favourite pair. It just gets the best results. Simple as that. We're only halfway through three months and we're already up to 11% profit. Now, this is just a, a blanket six months back testing. There will have been several days during this time where there were red folder events and I wouldn't have traded. And although they, they did in back testing take profit, I would still not trade them simply because. Uh, the reasons I mentioned earlier about red folds and news events. Um, and, and by not trading them, my, you know, based off this back testing, so there would have been several days I didn't trade, which would have obviously reduced my overall profit. Um, you'll find that most of those red folds and news events line up with these days of larger drawdown. So I would have made a bit less profit, but I would have also had less drawdown. I have purposely added a lot of settings to this software to allow people to tailor it to suit, you know, to suit how they want to trade. If they want to win, if they don't mind incurring more risk, um, they can they can set it up to suit them. Um, you know, you can quite often make more profit if you don't mind incurring more risk. Uh, you can change the settings to suit when you want to trade. If you want to trade the Asian session or the New York London session, you can do that. Um, you know, if you you know want to use it on a prop firm and you know your number one priority is to keep the drawdown extremely low, then you can set it up to suit that. Um, doing that you'll make less profit, but keep the drawdown lower. Um, you know, there's any number of different strategies you can tailor this software to suit really. Nearly through the whole six months now. Obviously much better results. Um, out of all the pairs I've traded and back-tested, pound-yen, um, it's, it's always been the best. I haven't really traded it during London, New York session yet, but, you know, that's... Where my focus is going to be at the moment is is doing a lot more back testing. So I'll try coming up with settings for all the pairs on the Asian session and for the New York London London New York session. Um, you know, we'll, I already know there will be some pairs that won't suit London New York, some pairs that won't suit the Asian session, but I'll. Um, find the best settings I can for each session and um, and share them via videos like this and you know, then you'll have more info to, to run with it. Anyway, that's it. Six months testing done. You know, we've made 18% profit and we've had up to 4.2% drawdown, which isn't quite as good as the... 
the results that I had before. A little bit less and a little bit more drawdown. I don't know why that was. I must have done something slightly different, but that's good enough um, to show that those settings work really well. Never hit my 5% drawdown. Had excellent results. And on that, I will leave it with you for now, guys. But that gives you um, optimized settings for four different pairs for the Asian session and um, some optimized settings for Euro USD during the London New York session. So that's a good first video on the topic. I will endeavor to do more back testing, learn more, and share it shortly. Have a good one.